Hey, what up, boys? So after a few days of poring over the live stream this month and really absorbing what was discussed and shown, it's about time we set up the following month's dog shit content, squeezing this fruit as dry as a bold man's $2 steak on a non-stick frying pan. Oh, wow, what a steak, bruh. There were some pretty interesting revelations this month and I want to spend today breaking this down and pointing out the topics I think are worth dragging out long enough to farm some additional ad revenue. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Cooper Cola because I was genuinely pleased with the combat direction Intrepid chose to go with. I did indeed already break everything down from this livestream in this video up here in the top corner. And I'll also link this at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere just yet, because for the first time since, well, ever, this highly anticipated MMORPG is finally starting to look playable. And I'm excited to discuss this with you all today. Now. With all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So, to start us off today on our rambling, copium-filled clickbait video, I want to talk about how much different the game feels this time around compared to basically all previous livestreams. Before now, the showcases felt very scripted, very showman-like, just giving us a taste of what Intrepid is capable of within the MMORPG genre. Imagine the Amazon shills when a small indie company outperforms a giant corporate superpower in just one live stream. <laughs> Multi-billion dollar company, by the way. The focus was purely on the graphics and innovations made. For example, the seasonal tech showed off in May this year, and the strides they've made on the interesting environments like the desert using the landform tool. We of course got our basic melee attack showcase in between this, however, that still felt very showman-like due to the lack of one thing in particular. No, not dangerous amounts of copium, we are of course talking about the user interface. It's incredible how much of a difference it makes when a clear, readable MMORPG UI is visible on the screen. It genuinely felt like a playable game this time around, not just some garbage FOMO simulator. And there was actually a lot of interesting information given to us in relation to the UI that I can relay to you now it has finally been revealed. You see, I sit on these information dumps for months on end waiting for a reasonable time to actually release them. I've got so much I want to release, but Stephen, Bruh, you gotta stop feeding us crumbs, man. I'm, I'm sitting on so much potential revenue, it... It's starting to get a bit uncomfortable up there. Most of this information was given to us during the Melee Showcase a few months ago, so you'll forgive me for momentarily taking your eyes off the beauty that is the Ranged Combat Showcase this month. Steven explained how the UI will be completely customizable when it comes to the numbers shown on screen, customizing the shape, the size, the color, and even the direction that they flow, which is perfection in my opinion. Add-ons are a very hot topic within this genre, and especially within Ashes of Creation due to its old-school nature. I've had infinite requests asking me to talk about add-ons for this MMO, but I've held out on talking about them because, well, I simply, quite literally, don't give a shit. And besides, Steven and the team have said on multiple occasions just how flexible the UI will be, but it is nice to finally see the general direction that they're going with it. It's minimalistic, simple, but still keeping that very old school aesthetic. I myself, and I think a lot of you boomers in the audience, appreciate such a pleasing fantasy-like aesthetic. A couple of interesting things to note on the UI is the icon up here next to your health and mana. This likely represents your archetype from level 1 to 25, but when you begin dabbling into the 64 class meta, will each of these combos have their own icon? It's hard to say, but I am leaning towards yes. And before moving on, I did want to talk about the regional discovery UI that popped up, as it is a very interesting indicator of the size of certain regions. If this tower is that far away, but the regional boundary is all the way back here, just how big is this world? I think in the actual context, it's going to be much, much larger than we have perceived it to be in our minds. However, this is most certainly a video for another time, so let's segue the video 
into our next topic by touching on the UI again and focusing on the damage numbers themselves, because there's certainly something interesting I noticed about this particular aspect. In my little community of degenerate losers who haven't left their mother's basement yet, the difficulty of Ashes of Creation has been a major topic. This has been reflected for both the skill requirements in PvP as well as the difficulty of mobs in the world in PvE. I think the PvP topic and the absolute shitstorm this reveal has created is best suited for another video. So today, I'll just focus on the new information I noticed about these mobs and the difficulty shift from previous Ashes of Creation showcases. Alpha 1 was trivial, admittedly, however, that's to be expected due to it being merely a back-end technical test. It's important to note though that the dungeons in Alpha 1 were not soloable, but they didn't require a full group of eight either. We were three, a tank, cleric, and mage, and the dungeons felt as though they were balanced for such a small party. The time to kill felt good, the mobs hit fairly hard, putting a nice amount of pressure on the cleric's mana. But what about these minotaurs? Were they threatening enough? Did they require the player to react accordingly? And how would other classes feel in this location compared to the ranger? Interesting questions indeed, and I want to tackle these point by point. This place was labelled explicitly as a single player spot, and the mob diversity and mechanics were admittedly fairly shallow. We saw two mob types, a dredger acting as a kind of weak filler mob, and the minotaur shaman, featuring a couple of mechanics like a damage mitigation shield, a heal, and a standard water bolt. Pretty standard stuff, however they did mention that there were some types of minotaurs missing. For example, the marauder, the berserker, and presumably the leader of the clan altogether. The Khan. But what really piqued my interest here, aside from the fact that Steven died 12 times, and that was the fact that they went out of their way to label these Minotaur Shaman as mage class mobs. Uh, given that I'm a you know DPS class, and these guys are particularly susceptible to rangers because they are um, mage class NPCs. The reason I found this rather interesting was because Ashes of Creation has always said it wants to feature a rock, scissors, paper approach to balance. The last game to utilize this properly and in a binary fashion was RuneScape, as it generally had three playstyles, melee, range, and magic. Melee would be super effective against ranged, range would be super effective against magic, and magic would be super effective against melee. And it works like a triangle of balance with eight very diverse classes that blur the lines quite intensely. Bards and rangers, rogues and fighters, summoners and mages, clerics and tanks. Not only does the 64 classes not actually fit into this triangle because it's an odd number, but the 64 classes themselves are supposed to act as a way to blur that very heavy focus on the three main roles. Ashes also introduces the jack of all trades archetypes into this mix through the bard and summoner. So is the balance aiming to be more of a square than a triangle? It's all baseless speculation at the end of the day, but hey, it's not like you come here just to exclusively glance at my bulge. Hey, uh, there's a significant correlation between the times that I don't actually show my bulge in the intros and the times that I do. <laughs> you guys are thirsty as fuck, but trust me guys, I'm already taken and... You couldn't handle me even if you wanted to. But how did the combat itself feel as a whole? Even with Steven playing a ranger fighting against mage type mobs that he's supposed to be technically super effective against, he did pretty much get his ass handed to it. People are worried because Ashes of Creation's so-called hybrid cleave combat gameplay will end up being like your average Korean booba simulator, and I don't agree with this at all. Guild Wars 2 demonstrates pretty well how difficult open world content can be using a hybrid system, and their expansions, Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire, and End of Dragons do a great job of reminding you that you're just a washed up boomer who can't adapt to a combat system that requires more than two brain cells. But I digress. I could go on for hours about balance, its importance, and the difficulty of the open world PvE content, but I feel like I've outstayed my welcome on this topic. So let's conclude today's video with a healthy dose of copium to see what kind of teasers they gave us to look forward to as the Alpha 2 draws near.
So I want to start out our final segment today discussing some concerns about the lack of what was shown. People were expecting a full showcase of the ranger archetype, but we only got three fairly standard but still core skills for the ranger. No doubt a lot of you, including myself, was expecting a look at a skill tree, a fleshed out roster of attacks, and maybe even a little bit of the augment system. Admittedly, I did kind of overshoot expectations in my prediction video because I couldn't quite figure out what your emo meant. Maybe if you didn't blue ball us for 30 days straight, my predictions wouldn't be so full of hopium now, would they? But then why didn't we get to see the full roster of abilities? Is it because they're not ready? Oh no! Does that mean Ashes of Creation is much further away than we expect them to be? How are we gonna cope? What about the hype? But most importantly, how is Nark going to continue churning out a dog shit content? Well, Actually, this livestream hasn't pushed back my original prediction at all. I still very much stand by the March 2023 prediction, and you know, if I keep saying it in videos, it might come true. However, there is one simple reason why I stick by this prediction. No matter how little or how much they show, Steven and the team has always said they do not want to give away anything that would ruin the exploration and discovery of Ashes of Creation before Alpha 2. This is an extremely important part of MMORPGs, and although I personally think this particular aspect will be lost for the launch due to the nature of this game's development, it still can offer this experience during the Alpha 2. They will probably relinquish something like a look into the augments leading into Alpha 2 just to give us a taste of excitement, but a taste is all we'll get, and to be honest, that's all I want, really. Additionally, we also learned some really interesting information about the weapon skill trees this month that may entice me to elaborate on my speculation video about this a few months ago. That all depends on how desperate I get for revenue this month. I know how you all love a little bit of baseless speculation, and it seems nearly all of the aspects they've shown us so far, the weather effects shown this month were gorgeous, the landform tool seems to be getting put to good use, and overall, I am extremely pleased with the update this month. So let's end today's video with a bit of mandatory comment farming by asking a pretty controversial question to you, my dear viewer. Has the progress shown this month pushed back your prediction for Alpha 2's release date, pushed it forward, or solidified it because the progress they've shown seems to be on track from your perspective? We got a hell of a lot revealed this month, and nearly all of it was behind the hood stuff that we had no idea about until today. Hopefully, this borderline pointless video has brought them to light, and I'm confident Alpha 2 is at least a certain amount of time away. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and my opinions mean nothing without you complimenting my beard. And hey, as we've begun ramping up community interaction, we've started playing some community games together in the Discord. Casual things like Jackbox and Among Us. So come join the Discord as I want to start ramping this up leading into Alpha 2 as we prepare the channel for streaming. But Nark, you just wasted my time with this clickbait trash. Ashes of Cretion as a whole is just vapor or designed to waste your time and take your money. Pantheon is money well spent. And to that I say, listen kid, I could make a shallow joke about Pantheon, but... To be honest, Pantheon does a pretty good job of making a joke out of itself, and if you genuinely thought that this test weekend wasn't a complete shit show, then you're high on copium. <laughs> <laughs>